but basically we think that this would be consistent with a comprehensive plan to put to allow single family homes in there um, and we think the way the zone lines fall on the tail end of this 130 unit project uh, the rest of which have been built out including some that are in the zone um, that that's unfair to the developer so uh, again I'd be pleased to try to answer any questions and Mr. Stinson is here as well and uh, I suspect we'll want to go through this again next uh, month have you a copy of our zone change checklist uh, I, I think do. perhaps you do have a copy of that uh, there are a couple of things there that I think we need in written form and uh, one would be a, a statement which uh, describes the consistency with the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance and another is a, also another statement indicating the zone changes compatibility with the surrounding neighborhood and most importantly the impact on the value of adjacent properties this is under 19-4-9A5 uh, and those are, are pretty important to have in our packets for I, I had thought we had addressed that in our February 11th letter I get the message that perhaps I ought to submit something additional and right. be pleased to do so that would be helpful uh, do we have some other questions tonight yes Mrs. just a point of clarification sir when did you say this area was rezoned to RP I believe it was 1978. So that was 10 years ago. That was 10 years ago. What has motivated you to come forward after a time that uh, 10 years has Ms. elapsed? Mr. Balfour has been um, developing his original 130 lots since 1964, um, and it is just now these are the 13 last lots left. He has been developing them out since 1964. Right. They, they actually, the whole concept of lot was eradicated 10 years ago. I'm sorry, I'm not following that. Well, RP, there is no building in RP. Then the concept of the lot was eradicated 10 years ago. The building lot. Yes, the zone was changed in 1978, which purports on space to prohibit single-family homes. That's why we're right. here. And he has been developing other portions of it and just now has decided to come forward on these remaining 13. Um, I, I think you may be aware that the uh, board is really guided by the foundation of the comprehensive plan uh, the, the statements that are in there a resource protection area is considered very uh, sacred <laughs> and um, so it, the onus to prove to the board that this should be changed does come upon the applicant uh, and uh, for many reasons a resource protection zone was imposed on this area and we even the planning board has walked over it during some rather watery times so that we are somewhat familiar with it um, and have gotten our feet wet and mucky so to speak um, <laughs> I wonder if uh, if the Conservation Commission wants to say anything generally at this time or make any comments Yes, any comments the Conservation Commission would have would be general. Uh, that uh, the resource protection zones were set up back in the 1970s to protect areas in town that were of hydric, were hydric soils, and uh, this was done for the very specific purpose of protecting them. That we feel that this area indeed does represent such an area and uh, would uh, stand as I think we have in other instances in this town against the alteration of, of uh, uh, an RP zone. I, I would also add that this is that this particular wetland is is uh, 
connects a very large wetland area uh, to the south of it and acts as a corridor uh, for the effluent of this to go in down uh, Broad Cove Stream and into the ocean and that the entire area is, is uh, I would estimate very roughly probably a 40 or 50 acre wetland uh, so this is, is a major flowage area in the town. Thank you. Uh, questions? No, there is a, a road that was built through this area. Mr. Dale, do you want to comment on that? Uh, which you can do in resource protection. Zones. Yes, there, as shown on the plan, this portion of the original road from 1964, in fact, is built and has been for many years. As I indicated in my February letter, controversy arose over some further improvements of that a year or so ago, but that's been in place for a long time. This portion has, although shown on the original 64 plan, has never been built and is not in effect today. You asked the question about the sewer. The town's public sewer does come down here and does come up these ends behind this road. It does not run through here at present. And as I indicated in my opening remarks, we may not be able to, under the terms of the town's sewer ordinance, connect into the town's public sewer. Uh, so that's why we have shown a, a joint uh, collector system there. Yes, Mr. Butler. A couple of questions. One that picks up on that. Mr. Daly shows a lot 99 is, hook, has, is being hooked up to the sewer. Yes. How would that occur under the current sewer ordinance? I spoke with the building inspector and he indicated that um, he felt that that lot had sufficient frontage on Broad Cove Road that that one lot could hook in there as, as having frontage. The second question deals with some of the information in regards to soils, data, and wetlands identification. The soils, in terms of soils, there is something on the plans that are referred back to Daryl Brown, November 1988. In the package materials, there's something for Barrel Brown dated 1986. Are we assuming that there was just a mistake in terms of the plan? That is the typo on the note. It's supposed to refer to night. Obviously, we haven't come to November 88 yet. Okay. Right. <laughs> Rather forward thinking. Yes. Um, second issue dealt with wetlands identification that I assume was done by Sebago Technics. John Nelly's name is on there. Yes. It was done in March of this year. Was that a vegetative or soils analysis or a combination? I'd better defer to Mr. Simpson. My name is Walter Stinson. Uh, we retain John Malley to uh, do a vegetative uh, analysis uh, of that site, uh, and his uh, report alludes to the, the vegetation which he found uh, back in March, and we combine that with uh, Daryl Brown's uh, soil study uh, to come up with the uh, basic designations. Uh, John also had available to him Daryl Soil's work uh, when he did his vegetative analysis. I can continue. Is there a written report that follows up the materials that are on the plan that were submitted? From, 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 Ms. from, from sorry, from Mr. Malley. Can you have a written report? Yes, from oh. Daniel Brown, there was just the mapping which we've incorporated on that site plan. From John Malley, there is a one or two page report that says the same thing, but okay, which I don't think has been submitted at this point. So that okay. probably needs to be submitted. The other question is it, it refers to type 5, type 6, and type 7 wetlands, which comprises a good 90% of this uh, lot in question. Are those, uh, those type 5, 6, and 7 are referring to what? They refer to the designations, I believe, in the Fish and Wildlife uh, brochure. And uh, John's written report, which I apologize if that wasn't submitted to the board, addresses uh, those three categories uh, of wetlands. So it's probably Circular 39. Yes. I think it would be helpful uh, to beyond figures to have some written uh, material accompanying the vegetative sure. report identifying for the board. Uh, the vegetation. Mm -hmm. uh, 
also, and, and this perhaps to Mr. Dale, there is some uh, rumor that there may be a boundary dispute uh, in the far portion of this area. Do you, are you aware of that, or do you, is that a rumor, or is that a, uh, does a that have any basis? <laughs> I can't say whether it has any basis. The first I've heard of it is just now. Th there's a dispute, you think, between mm -hmm. one of the neighbors and Mr. Balfour as to where the property lines mm -hmm. are? First, could, I've heard of that. Could you investigate that for us? And um, just, uh, I could, but you'll have to give me another lead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Because well, I haven't heard, uh, I don't I know anything about I believe Mr. Kennedy uh, at one time wanted to develop, and he's hoping to develop uh, close to your border. Is that, uh, Mr. Daly, do you know anything about yeah, this? Yeah, I guess he uses the name Fort Ridley. Uh, Greater Fort Ridley. Greater Fort Ridley. He claims in the transfer. I will investigate that. That would be helpful to add to uh, our next packet. Uh, I think really we, we cannot set a public hearing tonight because there are, is more material that we need. Um, we need a better submission on the wetlands, a better definition of those. Uh, and uh, we need to uh, have the two statements on your uh, zone change checklist that we asked for in relationship to the comprehensive plan <coughs> and the zone changes compatibility with the surrounding neighborhood and impact on the value of adjacent properties. Um, is there anything else that the board would like? Would you like to go on a site walk uh, or set a site walk time? That might be helpful before we uh, look at the calendar. And I imagine Saturdays might be bad this time of year, and it is light enough at the end of the day. Uh, would you like to go on a, a site walk uh, July, the week of July 25th or in through there? Uh, I'm not going to be here that week, but I have walked about it, and you will Been not be. Yeah. Um, my first free date really would be uh, the third or the fourth of August when we're moving. Better to do. Yeah, that's the point. You better share with the help. The fourth. Let's, let's aim for the fourth for a sidewalk. And shall we say five o'clock? Would that be are agreeable with you? What day of the week is and that? And that's a Thursday. And should we, should we park rough around the edge of Pine Ridge Road? Would that be acceptable to some of the neighbors? Public road. Okay. Sounds good if, if the neighborhood feels that's all right, too. Okay. It seems to be a fair representation. <laughs> uh, yes, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Gunther. will the town uh, be engaging in any scientific studies of its own? Uh, it may be that we will want to ask, depending on what is submitted from the developer, the burden is on them. If we don't feel that, that the information is accurate um, or complete enough we can either ask them for more or engage uh, a wetlands specialist to examine this and I I think we can determine that after our, perhaps after our site work just to follow up something else that perhaps the board might want to or ask of the applicant is if they determine whether or not there are any technical reasons why the board should grant the request and that may come out through the, the compliance with the Comfort of Plan Zoning Ordinance. But I think it's important to flesh out more detail with perhaps the scientific reasons why the, the request is being, uh, being made. 
I'd like to remind you uh, also that submissions should be brought in by the 29th of July for an August, uh, to meet an August okay. meeting. Are you, are you contemplating that we would make submissions by July 29th to appear on your August agenda? If you want to. You don't have to. You oh, can go to September if you prefer, and we would be no. just as pleased to have you come in September. No. We will meet that submission date. And when we come back in August, it will be, again, to review our application to make sure it's complete. Right. And, and then we would, uh, at that point, we September. may be able to set a public hearing and, and uh, go from there. Very good. We, we thank you very much. <laughs> Our next item of business is Windermere, a major subdivision. Uh, it, it's coming in for a pre application conference and a pre-application conference is really a situation where uh, the applicant explains his concept uh, and perhaps taps some of the uh, viewpoints of the planning board members um, we have a representative from yes you? my name is Alan Mooney and I'm representing the owners of the property that is addressed at 236 Fowler Road in Cape Elizabeth. The owners, uh, two of whom are here this evening, are John and Josie Shelley of Cape Elizabeth and Jean and Suzanne LaBelle. And as I understand the requirements of the pre-application conference, uh, we have presented a drawing which is very informal in nature at this time, deliberately so because of the uh, interest in getting your feedback and input before we proceed with a more detailed design for the project. It does involve a piece of property somewhat slightly less than 13 acres off of Fowler Road just beyond the Great Pond area and it's shown on the site plan that I believe you have in front of you. What we propose to do is essentially a group of clustered um, what best is defined by your uh, zoning ordinance and actually your site plan ordinance uh, as clustered housing. It would involve seven freestanding uh, single-family homes clustered to take advantage of the natural topography on the site, which is some four to five hundred feet from Fowler Road. There would be a single uh, septic system, actually two separate systems, one to take care of the gray water or uh, laundry waste and the other for the septic system itself. It is in the re residential A zone. The owners are proposing to construct uh, what we would define as starter homes, uh, modest sized capes that would have finished first floors, unfinished second floors, so that they could be sold for a, a price that would allow someone buying their first home to buy them. They would have probably single car oversized garages we have, we would offer at this time, because I think it's an important aspect, knowing the interest of the town in developing a network of footpaths throughout the town, that this property, as we understand it, is along one of those possible routes, and the owners have, uh, would like it to be known that they are willing to participate uh, in that program as it might be appropriate to this piece of property. And I think at this time, we have had some conversations with Mr. Daigle about the project. We have had the uh, survey work done, the topography work done, which is represented by the schematic plan you have in front of you. We have had the uh, soils work done to be sure that we could build the two uh, community septic systems necessary to support the seven units that would be on the property. And that's essentially as far as we've gone, other than, than doing a conceptual layout at this time, which is presented on the site plan you have in front of you. I think with that uh, brief overview, uh, perhaps if there are any questions that the board has or any guidance that you might give us as to what would be of concern to you with regard to this project so we can make sure that's included in our subsequent design. Um, could you tell us how long that road is into your cul-de-sac? The, well, the total length of the road into the, uh, the, the 
the distance, the end of the cul-de-sac is slightly more than 500 feet. It does so exceed. So you would be requesting a waiver. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the principal reason for that is the topography of the of the land, which will be detailed uh, more fully in, in our full design. But there is uh, a rather natural area in the property. There's a pond located in one area, and we wanted to uh, stay to the higher uh, sort of plateau if one were to walk the site where the houses and the cul-de-sac are located is a rather natural sighting of those homes and we wanted to uh, take advantage of that and also keep them at a location that would allow uh, the enjoyment of that pond and, and the area that would would be maintained as a as a, a natural area but at least a uh, cleaned up area as part of the whole project uh, without actually seeing the property, it does look as though your common septic is, is very close to the approximate edge of the alders, which usually indicate a, a wetland. Uh, a, have you well, yes, that... That is close in that area, but there's also... Uh, the ground is rising away from that, the wetlands or the wetter part of the property actually starts some distance into the alders as it's represented here. And the soils, uh, Mr. Malley from Cape Elizabeth who had designed the system for us was satisfied that the soils in that area were the optimum location for that site, for the septic system. That would be something that we would want to be concerned with to make sure that it was a, a good site for a septic system. Yes, no. and we will... Mingling, commingling with <laughs> wetlands. Agreed, and it's certainly in the best interest of the owners of the homes that that be the case as well. And we would certainly provide the complete design for the septic system, uh, you know, in, in our subsequent designs. There is a ditch there, yes. What, what is the ditch drain on marsh? No, it, it seems to be pretty much a natu just a natural characteristic. There is, of course, if there's, if there's a storm, there's water running down through there. And there may be, uh, from time to time, some water that's coming, coming from the easterly uh, direction that, again, is primarily surface water that's through there. If there's not... Uh, running water in there continuously at any uh, in any is way. No, no, there isn't. And what are you proposing for the, for the rest? The rest of the property? Uh, nothing. You know, it's to remain the way it is. We've we've investigated. We looked at in developing this design. We looked at several possibilities. One of which was conforming with a somewhat routine, the requirements of what you might consider to be a routine subdivision in providing the individual lots for each home. And there were several uh, reasons that, that was we considered that not to be ideal or optimum for the site. We were, it was difficult, first of all, to find uh, septic sites that would serve each individual lot. Access to the back parts of the property was also difficult because there is the pond and a somewhat uh, wet area that's surrounding the pond. And we felt that trying to build in the back of the property would actually damage the natural characteristics, the attractive characteristics of the site, which is part of the reason for proposing the, the cluster concept. So there's no intention uh, of expanding that. In fact, it would the whole property would be essentially under common ownership um, of the owners of these seven buildings. What about lot lines? Would you propose having lot lines? No. No. Unless, you know, that's something you would require, so but our proposal at this point is that the land would be common ownership uh, of the owners of the seven homes. All the seven homes would be owning the entire property. That's correct.
I, at this point, I, yes. The owners are nodding yes. I'm free to say yes. <laughs> Correct. Um, I'm not sure where 23 is, but I know where that truck is sitting out in the field, where the house is torn down. Where are we? Well, that house that was torn down, essentially at the, what would be the right, easterly corner of the lot as you're looking at it in front of you on the site plan. Okay. It's in that vicinity anyway. We will ultimately need the abutters. Oh, of course. Questions or comments? Just about that. One question. Um, I assume you've done a net residential acreage calculation to determine that you actually have enough net land left for the seven housing units. The calculate we. All of a sudden, the volume went up. You very yeah, I'm sure you are. The uh, we did. We have done those calculations. Yes, and we are right at the limit, honestly, which we would be working out as we get into the detail. The, the numbers that we have right now, if we go with the, the acreage that we have reported to us, which is approximately 12.6 acres, it gives us, based on the density, uh, it works out to approximately 6.9 units as opposed to the seven that we're proposing. We have not at this point, no. Of course. Any other comments? Have you any questions or anything that you'd like? The only to ask of the board? question, I guess, that does come to mind at this point, uh, we understand that, that much of our work from here before we come before the board again would be with members of the staff and working out a lot of the details which we're prepared to do. With regard to the uh, footpath, uh, I'm curious, is there, uh, is there a, uh, someone that we should be talking to to see if there is ways to integrate that into this program? I think you should talk with the conservation That would also be conservation. And, and they can, there is a green belt plan and maybe you'd like to see a, a copy of that. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, your next route, uh, you are probably going to be a major subdivision since you have more than five uh, lots. Yes. And uh, so we will be looking for an application completeness as the next step. Okay. And our, our deadline, if you want to try for the August meeting, uh, would be July 29th for submission of materials. Okay. We will probably... Uh, soften your agenda for the August meeting and more likely oh, we'll good. be here in September. <laughs> We're all hoping to take a little later time. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation and we look forward to seeing you next in September. Okay. Thank you. Our next item of business is Maxwell Farm market whose produce we are enjoying right now at its peak. Mr. Maxwell. Yes. I was here on March 22nd for a brief visit. Since then I've been around the zoning boards and a few other places. They didn't know what to do with me either. But uh, <coughs> my original approach and my desire to have a farm market within the town was to uh, have the right to sell other than just my own product, uh, which is what was required under the roadside stand ordinance. The zoning board, has <coughs> while they didn't give me everything I wanted, they did grant me uh, a satisfactory uh, solution to that. And along with that, I volunteered, or you could look at the other way around, they requested, required 
that I <coughs> submit the site plan review. Uh, I don't know what that means I'm a roadside stand again as far as legal terms or what, but uh, uh, they couldn't call me that because uh, if that's what I was, I wouldn't be before them. So, but anyway, I'm back again with the idea of continuing in my desire to have a retail farm market. Probably, if you're like me, you'll be the last or forgotten where you'll put my March 22nd presentation. Uh, I'm not going to go into it too much. I'm mainly here now to uh, maybe pump you a little bit or to uh, let you pump me a little bit. Either way, trying to brace my feet for the site plan review. I've been here most of the evening and it's been quite educating already, so, so I think it's been profitable for me. Uh, <coughs> if you can find that sometime, you will see a sketch of the location on uh, Spilling Avenue. It's south of the medical building. I haven't got anything, I didn't present anything for the night, this at all. It's on that area. You that are we, listed as a pre-application right. conference and actually we don't have that kind of a uh, right. <laughs> term really for your situation, but, <laughs> but situation. it is, it would right. be helpful. Though. Right, but that's where it's, it's, we intend to locate it in that area south of the uh, medical building. We own those fields there. Uh, it will be on basically a 10 plus acre lot, which is a separate lot. We do have another 80 some acres contigu contiguous uh, to the rear of this, but that particular separate lot is 10 plus acres according to the town map anyway. Uh, where we hope to place it will leave us over 200 feet to our southern line and 400 feet to our neighbors on the north, which will be the medical building. Uh, I know we've got lots and lots and lots of details to uh, uh, contend with before we come in for full flown, blown site plan review, and we're working on that now. Uh, my dream is to be here for the August meeting. I'm not sure of it, but we have some people working on it. One reason why I kept this was because I thought he might have some questions that I could at least ask you for him, but he, uh, he has not uh, come forth with any, so uh, that's taken care of for that. When I was here at the beginning, I did have a sketch of the market, and I've told everybody else you like this the way you kept it, so now I don't have one. But uh, I, our engineer did just make some pretty sketches of which there's no real uh, definitive work here other than to me it looks pretty. And, uh, this is basically what we're thinking about. Uh, you minor details are going to be changed, but this would be a sales area This would be an entrance. I think you now would be an entrance on each side. This sticks out a little bit to the front. area down there. The lower part will be strictly storage, washing, preparing, basically first sale, second floor. Uh, I do have a, just another very rough sketch. very rough, but it gives you ideas of what we're thinking of, and of course I realize we've got to have... So you would have one one entrance, really, which would serve both as an entrance and an exit from your stand? Yes, it would be one entrance. To your that, that this is what it would be in, what it would do is be straight in the front. Uh, he wants a double door 
entrance. No, uh, excuse me, I meant to the parking lot or the parking area. Oh, yes, even though it would be one, one entrance connected to from the parking lot to the would, would you pay the parking lot or would it be gravel? This, this without a doubt, would all be paid. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the beauty for traffic, uh, wear and tear, uh, paved with, with stripes. Um, you know, if any of you want to get an idea, you can, you know, you can visit our Portland store and, and you can see what we have there. The <laughs> What's that? And pick a few strawberries oh, well, on the way. Well, no, they're, you, they're done for this year. <laughs> so that gives you ideas what we're considering. We have got 200 plus feet this way, 400 plus feet on that end uh, that we have, and that would be towards the medical building. To the rear, of course, we go a half a mile, you could say. To, well, we go right through the Sawyer Street. Yeah. Have you had any uh, feedback from neighbors? Uh, and yes. Has that been positive? Uh, basically, uh, yes. Uh, uh, I have one lady right across the street, uh, Mrs. Pollock. I think she's here. I've never met her <laughs> face to face. I've been going across her all night. Uh, I do have a a meeting with her tomorrow. She has expressed concerns, uh, and I can't even tell you other than what her lawyer said verbally mm -hmm. at the uh, zoning board meeting. And what I remember from that, I wouldn't want to. Maybe, maybe she could share them. But I, I do have a meeting with her tomorrow, not tomorrow, 10 o'clock, I believe, to uh, to at least address these with her. Uh, we have visited. Of course, one of the embarrassing things. As I visited neighbors from my other meetings, I did show them some sketches and ideas, but yet I had no idea what I was going to have because I was working on strictly the use. That was only could I have a farm market there. Without the use, I didn't have anything, you could say. And so while I showed them sketches and locations and where I want to dream of my driveways or entrances, that was just, just dreams. The, now's the time when we've got to find these things down, to, I realize, to satisfy you. So those that liked it, perhaps won't get what they liked, and those that disliked it, maybe we'll, I hope will be pleasantly surprised with the end result as we get input from experts and other such. Any uh, questions or comments from the, Mr. Butler? Just a quick question to Mr. Maxwell. Yes. Um, as you know, and we'll know more about as the weeks and months go on, um, there has been a subcommittee of the planning board that was assigned by this board to look at this whole issue of agricultural stands, farm stands, fish markets, and the like. Mr. Maxwell has been an integral part of the process, and I guess one question I have, given the fact that the recommendations are just now being kind of formalized and will be coming to you probably next meeting, do you foresee adhering to some or all the proposed requirements that are in that, uh, in the draft language that the Bladder Board will be looking at next month? Well, because that's a, a difficult question to answer. Uh, a lot of those things I'm 100% favor for, some I may not be. How much or what, what portion of that will become law and when, we don't know. Uh, basically, I feel as though now I'm, I can't go by that. But figuring that the planning board is going to be aware of them, and, and I'm basically in support of them. Uh, I will certainly include uh, quite a few of them in in my thinking. But it's not large yet. If I thought that was going to be law within a month or two, then I'd say, well, hey, maybe I could wait until I, I know what what to shoot at. Uh, you know, that they're talking about a 40,000 square foot minimum uh, for residence C. I don't know if that's a problem in any way. Because uh, I own 10 acres there. Uh, one question I had was, do I have to define the 10 acres as close as site plan is asking me, or can I define that topography, this and that, restrict it more to a size of what I'm going to be using, to see what I mean, uh, and if they want to think for 40,000 square feet, that might be something to think about. I don't know. What, what is the size of this building that you have? Uh, okay, well, 
the original thought was approximately 30 by 60. Uh, not many mm -hmm. shows there, although he shows quite a feet, but that includes conditions of court, no? I'm not sure of quite a feet plus an eight foot. See, that's, that's just rough mm -hmm. ideas. Nothing's been really finalized, but we were talking, uh, you know, 30 by 60 to start mm -hmm. anyway. But double floors. Double floor. Yeah. Right. So you're probably at 3,600 anyway. Right, but when you, th yeah, I know you're thinking of the total building. Yeah. Right. Now, the parking, of course, is on sales area, but we plan on meeting the parking and then some, uh, you know, to make sure there's plenty of room for the cars off mm -hmm. the street and, and all of that. Uh, well, I, I uh, think that we're very appreciative of the effort that you've put into defining this new ordinance, Mr. Maxwell, and, mm -hmm. and uh, what you. Uh, have presented us here tonight, I think uh, looks quite pleasing, uh, but uh, you're right that the ordinance, the new ordinance probably will not come into play mm -hmm. for at least another two or three months, would you suspect, Steve? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we will have to go under, right. under the old. Um, I see the new ordinance, one thing there proposing is uh, what 50 foot setbacks on the side uh, I believe no parking in any of that 25 foot buffer mm -hmm. and no parking okay 100 foot setback on the front with parking allowed only in the 50 feet next to the building mm -hmm. uh, the question I have which is slightly related to that with my 400 feet of buffer already do you see the, do you people anticipate requiring me to plant 10 foot trees every six feet when I've already got, uh, you know, 400 foot to the medical building, shall we say now, you know? Um, <laughs> I, I, I would suspect that we would want to consider the impact of the traffic on the surrounding uh, neighborhood yeah, and that we might ask for some buffers uh, they might not have to be 10 foot sequoias or 10 foot high or 20 feet high sequoias, but they we might want to have some screening and buffering. That would be a part of the site plan review. Uh, I think I would have to wait until we see what the final plans look like and what a site visit says. Right. Too early to judge. That. So that, that would be. I was on the planning board when the medical building went in there. And the they, they, they allowed about a six foot buffer between me and the medical building. Mm. Time. <laughs> Times have changed. <laughs> when, when, when they wanted to put the sewer in, they had to buy a 10 foot strip off me so they could run the sewer up and down by the edge of them. That's how close it mm. Well, you know, I grant you it's difficult for a, you as an individual to say much. You've got to have a full fledged boat to do this. But you can see where we are. Uh, I'm not sure at this moment whether, whether I'm even going to try for the August meeting or not. I know it's the right thing. We don't have to <laughs> say that. You've heard I, it. I've heard, I've heard that about four times tonight. Yeah. And but I would suggest that you meet with our staff, uh, Steve Butler and Mr. Daigle, and... Uh, 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 they have heard my voice. Uh, all right. Well, they might like to hear it again right. if you want to bring in some submissions for the August right. uh, meeting, and we'll have a checklist for you that you can go through to. Help you know, you. is that checklist different than than the, in the zoning thing? About the same, but a little more spelled out for you, right. perhaps. Okay. Well, I'd like to know and that we're still alive. I don't know how well, but we're still alive and, and working at it. It. Um, it looks good from this early, <laughs> early presentation, but uh, let's move forward and, yeah. and hope to see you in August. Well, my desire was, you know, to come in, uh, you know, rather to go for the August meeting. Uh, uh, I know we've got a lot of work to do, and I want to have it done before we come in. Because we, you know, if you don't have everything in one meeting, you don't have to give up. But I'd like to make an effort mm -hmm. to have everything that I can. Good. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, our next item of business is uh, is barely uh, making the evening, and is Phineas Sprague with a site plan review for a boat repair facility.
uh, under section 19-2-9 and also section 19-2-2-P. Uh, Mr. Most is, is uh, stating a conflict of interest and so we'll not be voting on this. Uh, we do have a quorum, or we had a quorum, <laughs> I hope <laughs> is returning. So uh, we're all right and we'll see you anon. <laughs> all right, at the sidewalk. All right. Uh, Mr. Sprague. Good evening, Madam Chairman. Pardon? Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Um, my name is Phineas Sprague, Jr., and I live on Charles Jordan Road in Cape Elizabeth. And I'm before the board tonight um, for a site plan review on a uh, boat repair facility according to on the amended section 19.2.2 of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance. Um, I have submitted to the board um, 15 copies of a site plan review, at least what I went over from the ordinance to find out to, to uh, address the question. And uh, uh, I'm here to see what we're going to do. Um, I would just for the benefit of, of the public explain that uh, this proposal has been before the zoning board and has been approved as a permitted use uh, and that an ordinance change was affected and approved okay. by the town council. Um, so it is our role at this time to discuss the site plan, which uh, there is a question that I have on page one of your site plan review. Um, under B, information on the title block. There's a new word in there that I've never seen before and <laughs> don't understand. Uh, and I wonder if you can enlighten me. There is B? a single in in, in liar. In liar. What? In, uh, that's a piece of property that lies inside of the entire contiguous part. Okay. What? What? Uh, so, who does that property is registered to a uh, William, William e. McCurdy? McCurdy. Yeah. Let's see. It's about a thousand or more feet from the particular area of the boat barn. Let's see. Um, it's not, there's no, uh, no house there. And on your, um, do you have a, any further description on the light that's going to be placed around the barn? The, uh, um, it was, a request was made to place the light uh, by the office door and um, we purchased a, a light that is uh, a motion detection light so that it would be only activated after the sun goes down and when something moves in front of it so that there wouldn't be a light on continuously. I see. So it would only be when it's in use, really. That's then. right. So when, when something activated. walked in front of it, a deer or something, it would turn on in the night. Uh -huh. And uh, a floodlight, I suppose that's pretty good, strong. Well, it would be 150 Wattage. watts, probably. 150 watts. Uh, are there any questions by planning board members, comments? There appears to be adequate buffering. Uh, the, it is the, well set back from that's right. any We're public road, and you don't anticipate any pedestrian traffic. No. We're about 850 feet to the closest part of the farmhouse to the uh, public road, and it's probably another 80 feet in addition to that to the barn. Mr. Butler, any no, questions or comments? In terms of the process, in terms of application completeness, uh, materials that are submitted are brief, but perhaps cover most things that the board needs to look at. I think that first, 
the board just will need to double check perhaps to make sure that there isn't any additional material that's required because there are some materials that haven't been submitted and they've been it's been described why they are not present but I think it's up to the board to decide whether or not it feels that given the proposed use if the application is complete at which point it could then start to review it tonight or some other point uh, in terms of the substance of what's being proposed and we are dealing with site plan review primarily uh, we have all had a uh, site visit actually um, so that we have seen the facility and uh, it's been most helpful um, essentially we're not planning to do to change the outside at all except for the things that have been asked to us by the building inspector there be no changes at all mm -hmm. um, a lot of the a lot of the issues were what they said to, to show what landscaping is contemplated why we're not going to have any landscaping it's the way it was the way it will be what is the board's uh, pleasure do you uh, feel that you would like to review this tonight and uh, or would you like more time to consider what's been presented Next question. Uh, you're not promote, you're not proposing any either any changes or any substantial changes to the existing road no this this use is sub substantially less than than the uh, potato storage operation that was there and so the the, uh, the roads and the um, facilities around the barn are really for a much larger operation than we contemplate so the facilities are more than adequate as they exist mm -hmm. um, could I ask you about the number of employees you we will maintain the number for uh, as written in the ordinance of four that's correct full-time that's probably correct. that's correct and you wouldn't be hiring any would not anticipate uh, we're not allowed to do that mm -hmm. under the ordinance uh, I have no problems with, with what he has presented or how he has presented it or what he would like to do. So. Uh, I think that as far as we can tell, or at least as far as I can tell, everything looks to be fairly much in order. Um, and I think that we could probably act on this tonight in, in view of that. Uh, we have a uh, hastily comprised motion. Uh, which I'll let Mr. Butler read since he's the author. Not and so you hasty. I had all of 15 minutes. Ah, <laughs> right. Not little did I know. Okay, let me read the suggested motion and you can make any changes that you wish. Be it ordered that the request to Phineas Sprague for site plan approval of the proposed boat repair facility be granted in accordance with section 19-2-9 of the zoning ordinance and the facts presented. And if you want, you can I'd mention that the boat repair facility is located off Charles E. Jordan Road. Good to me, Would you like to move that? I'll move. And <clears throat> is there a second? Seconded. It has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I think that this whole process, I know, may have been frustratingly long for you, but I think we've come up with an, an excellent ordinance and will serve the town well. So um, hopefully well, it will be rewarding. I appreciate that. The efforts that everybody has made to this end and um, I think that uh, I've had a good education I wouldn't trade it for anything <laughs> um, is there any further discussion if not all those in favor please say aye. aye aye opposed it is unanimous and you have your permit thank you madam chairman thank you thank you um, we have arrived miraculously before 10 o'clock uh, 
and Dan isn't here to witness this. But we do have some other business, uh, and it will be brief, so not to worry. Um, I guess perhaps uh, I let you know at the workshop that the town council has to approve by ordinance in the town any rules or regulations that the uh, planning board adopts. So uh, we really have to make a formal motion to uh, move that our rules and regulations be um, sent to the town council for and recommend them for adoption. So I think I'd appreciate that if somebody could do that. And the second. second. And all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous, and it shall be done. Or maybe it's already been done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> is there any other business to come before the planning board? I would just wish you all a happy vacation from a workshop <laughs> in the month of August. We all have a month off. And uh, if not, we entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. It is done, and we are adjourned, and thank you all.